We just had our entire backyard redone. So this backyard remodel was really expensive. I don't even wanna say how much, but uh, we took out a second mortgage to make this happen. This is the furniture that we've had back here. I bought this off Amazon. It's been okay just to have something here, but it's not very nice. And now that we've got this really nice backyard, Katie wants me to build some really nice furniture. So that's what we're gonna do today. I'm also making an outdoor coffee table using fire and epoxy, which may or may not be a total disaster. We'll see. And I'm building outdoor furniture just as it's about to get cold, which isn't the best time of year for a project like this, unless you're watching this video sometime between early April to September. Then it's the perfect time of year. And I'll have plans available so you can build this for yourself. And the best part is all you need is a miter saw and a few drills, maybe a couple clamps and a couple other things you have laying around the shop, but that's all you need to build this project. The ashtray and the power game and the remote control, that's all I need. This is really one of my more accessible builds and no CNC was used in this build. Seriously, I'm not trying to fake you guys out. I did not use my CNC this entire build. Now I miss her and she'll be back for my next video, but it's just me and some cedar and some super simple woodworking techniques. Speaking of cedar, lumber prices are still kind of high and all this lumber for this furniture set ran me about $900. Now, you could build a cheaper version just using pine construction lumber, but cedar is better suited for outdoor use because of its natural resistance to moisture and UV and insects. Also, if you look at some of the prices for outdoor furniture on this scale, this set would run you eight to $10,000 if you're looking on West Elm or Restoration Hardware, and I'm building this set for far, far cheaper than that. Okay, let's talk a little bit about the design and the process I used to design this piece. I really wanted to make this project as accessible as possible. And I often feel like the software that I use to design my furniture seems a little bit more advanced. That's why I'm happy to announce that I partnered with Make By Me on this project, which is an easy to use intuitive design software that requires no 3D modeling experience. Okay, let me show you real quick how I designed this piece and how easy Make By Me is to use. So Make By Me is a new app by Dassault Systems, which is the creator of things that you might've heard of like SolidWorks or home by me. Now, anyone can use this to create DIY projects in 3D, and then you can visualize those projects in your home before you go out and you buy material or make a cut list. So to get started, you shop by material. For this project, I'm using two by fours and two by sixes. So you go get those pieces of lumber and then bring those into the build environment. Now, what I like about this is it makes it really easy to understand the things you design since the software creates a set of plans as you build, including a materials list and a detailed cut list. Building a piece of furniture on Make By Me sort of mimics the steps you'll actually take when you're in the shop building a project, such as gathering your materials, choosing the angle of your cut, then cutting them to size, and then assembling all the pieces as you cut them. You're gonna do this in that modeling environment. And I designed this entire set of outdoor furniture using Make By Me. And I really encourage you to click on that link down below and just get in the software and play around with it and try it for yourself. And the best part, it's completely free. So one of the biggest mistakes I see on outdoor furniture is folks put a lot of work and have nice materials and build really nice pieces of furniture. And then they put crap cushions on top of it. I went out and splurged on some really, really nice outdoor cushion. It's uh, made with this fabric called Sunbrella. All my research, like these were the best. I got white, which maybe that was a bad choice, but I think it's gonna look really good. I know the dimensions of these cushions, but I wanna make sure they're gonna fit within my design. So what I've done is I've cut a few pieces that are gonna match the profile of the entire set, and I'm gonna use those to ensure the dimensions that I've got in my drawing, what the cushions actually are. You're gonna have the proper reveals, it's gonna go up to the edge. So as you can see, these dimensions look really good. I like the angle of lean, that's a 15 degree angle. That should be pretty comfortable, but not like so reclined that it's hard to get 
get out of. The spacing with the lower cushion, it's gonna hang over just a smidge, which is exactly what I want. You don't want it to be too far inset, so whenever you're sitting on it, your legs are hitting this front edge. Okay, I've got all those pieces cut to build the bases, and I'm gonna put this whole set together using screws and wood glue. Now, anywhere I use visible screws, I'm gonna first pre-drill and then cover that screw with a wood dowel later on. And to make that easier, I like to make a quick template. So I went with a combination of half inch and 3 8 inch dowels on this piece. But if I had it to do all over again, I would just stick with those 3 8 dowels everywhere. Also, I'm building a full set of furniture for my house, and I've got a sofa, a love seat, and two chairs. Chairs. and the design for all of these pieces is basically the same. So you can scale this to whatever you need and the size of the cushion that you have or the cushions that you buy. Again, I'll have a set of plans linked down below, so don't stress if you feel like you're missing anything as I work my way through this build. Another thing I like to do is set up a stop block. Even if that's just some janky board that you awkwardly clamp to whatever table isn't covered in tools from your last project. Just whatever works to allow you to make accurate, repeatable cuts. I'm assembling the frames that make up the armrest, and for this whole project, I'm gonna use Tight Bond 3 wood glue since that's waterproof and rated for outdoor projects. Also, let's go ahead and talk about the fact that dimensional lumber like this or even worse construction lumber is never going to be perfectly straight or flat i don't care how far you pick through the stack to get those perfect boards they're not perfect and one of the great things about this design is you don't have to be perfect one it's outdoor furniture and two, as long as it's relatively close to square, you can just force things together with screws. And before you go jumping into the comment section to tell me that I'm not a real woodworker, I'm not saying you should not care about trying to keep things as square as you can. I'm just saying with lumber like this, it's impossible. Just do the best you can. And quickly, I wanna say that I appreciate all of you who watch these videos. And if you like corny dad jokes and cool projects, and if you haven't already, I'd ask that you hit that subscribe button as it's one of the best ways to support what I do. Also, I've been doing this for the last four years while also having a full-time day job, and I've got some exciting news about that coming soon. So again, hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you don't miss all of that. Okay, I've got the lower seat frames built as well as the armrest slash side supports. So now I'm working on the back panels that lean back at a 15 degree angle. For these, I'll use more cedar two by fours for the frame and then cedar decking boards for the slats. Now, these cedar decking boards are a little over an inch thick, which makes them not only perfect for the slat material, but for those seat boards as well, which you'll see a little bit later on. Now, first I'm gonna cut all these slats just a little bit oversized. Once those frames are assembled, I can remeasure again. It's probably not gonna be perfectly square and then you can cut it to have a tight fit. Now, I've got a few scraps of quarter inch plywood on my workbench and these space the slats inside those two by four frames nicely. And I'm using a one inch wide scrap board to then space the slats from one another. The back panel for the love seat and the couch work exactly the same, but I've added a vertical two by four to break up those slats. At this point, all the components of the coffee table are built, but they're not assembled. And now I can go ahead and fill the dowel holes. Like I mentioned, I use half inch dowels on those lower seat frames, but if I built this again, I'd use three eighths dowels everywhere. And then once those dowels were added, I could sand and sand alone. All right, so I've used all the lumber that I need to build all the components of the outdoor furniture, and I've got this whole pile of extra lumber. Now, I could take it back to Home Depot, but it's bonus build time. So I'm gonna make a coffee table out of this because this isn't actually part of the build. This is just a bonus. I'm not gonna restrict myself to, you know, just using the chop saw and drills. I'm actually gonna use the table saw on this, and then we're gonna do some fire and epoxy. It's gonna be awesome, I hope or disaster, awesome or disaster, <laughs> one or the other. So back in the early Johnny Builds days, I did several Shoshugiban projects. It's one of the first things that kind of got my channel some recognition. And I used to get a bunch of comments telling me all the time that I should pour epoxy all over it. Now I resisted thinking it would be a shit show from the get go, but the day has come to finally give it a shot.
Okay, I'm gonna set that panel aside and get back to building and assembling this furniture set. I made another drilling template and make sure to space those to where they don't run into the previous screws in those lower frames. The back panel gets attached to the back side of the seat frame and that has that 15 degree angle. The back panel gets screwed in place and next I can add the armrest slash side supports. Now the seat and backrest, they're positioned three inches up off the ground. So resting the frame on a couple two by fours gives me the perfect spacing I need and supports the seat while I attach those sides. And here I'm gonna conduct the one inch jump test, which is the ultimate test of strength and durability. I mean, y'all just look at those ups. I only have four words for you. White men can jump. I added some more dowels to fill the screw holes and then assembled the sofa the same way, but this time using eight screws across the back. Now I'm guessing some of y'all might be concerned with how these pieces are gonna hold up with nothing but a couple screws and some wood glue to hold you and your family all on this piece of furniture. First, wood glue is crazy strong, often stronger than the wood around it. Also these spack screws that I'm using, these have a 345 pound shear strength per screw. So I shouldn't have any durability issues with this set. All right, let's get back to that Shoshugiban panel that I'm gonna turn into the coffee table. First, I wanted to seal the bottom of the panel with some Total Boat Glean varnish, and this is gonna prevent warping once the epoxy is applied to the other side. And for the top, I'm using Total Boat Tabletop Epoxy, and to help it lay down smoothly and level out, I'm heating up the surface here with a couple of torches. As I apply the tabletop epoxy, my idea was to brush on a thin coat and that's gonna seal the surface before pouring on thicker subsequent coats. But this was taking forever and I was in a hurry, so I just dumped the whole bucket on at once. And this is what we in the business call a huge mistake. I thought I could just brute force my way through this epoxy pour and just keep popping the bubbles with a torch as they pop up while it cured. But as you see here, as soon as I would pop the bubbles, more would form almost instantly. And I tried fighting this battle for a solid hour, but sadly, I lost. All right, well, that was exactly what I was afraid of. I'm rushing this because I actually leave for the Catskill Mountain Maker Camp tomorrow. So I'm not gonna have time to get this done doing it the proper way, which is to seal the surface of the wood with some penetrating epoxy. When you do that Shoshugiban finish, you basically create hundreds, maybe thousands of cracks all across the top of this piece. I couldn't pop enough bubbles. I mean, I, I literally sat here for an hour and use the torch and pop bubbles. And as soon as I would pop them, they'd come right back up. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flip it over. That's gonna be the new top. I'm gonna hit it with a coat of penetrating epoxy and that's it. I'm gonna leave it alone. If you wanna see the finished result, follow me on Instagram at Johnny Builds. I'm gonna post the finished coffee table and you can see whether or not I was able to salvage this. I apologize that I wasn't able to show you in this video, but again, I leave tomorrow. I've gotta to get this video done. So I'm gonna focus on wrapping up the furniture, you know, doing all that stuff. Finally, I cut those seat slats to size and brought the whole set to the house. Here I'm gluing on the slats and using a three quarter inch spacer to set them in place. Also, you see me using a brad nailer. If you don't have one, that's totally fine. You could just use screws and dowels like I did on the rest of the piece. So I just picked up this new HVLP sprayer from Rockler. I'm really excited to try it out. This is the new model that's got the gravity fed and it's got the undermount. If you don't have something like this, that's okay. I'll leave a link down in the description for this one, or you can just brush on your finish. I'm excited to try this thing out. And to spray, I'm gonna use this. This is Total Boat's Halcyon Clear Varnish. This stuff is awesome whether you're brushing or spraying. It's actually amazing if you're spraying. Dries really fast. I'll have links for this and all the other Total Boat products that I use down in the video description. Okay, we gotta spray. 
So I sprayed on three coats of this Total Boat Halcyon varnish. And y'all know that both Total Boat and Rockler are longtime sponsors of Johnny Builds. So make sure you check out those links down below. And when you support those sponsors, you help support my channel. And I very much appreciate all of you who do that. Okay, all that's left is to finally bring this new outdoor furniture set to the backyard. Jeff, pillow me. My nuts. It is illegal to cut these off of uh, pillows and mattresses, but uh, I don't care. Jeff, scissor me. Don't call the law. Give it a shot. Oh. That's what it sounds like when a 40-year-old uh, man sits down. Feels pretty good. It's a little bit lower than a standard chair, but uh, it feels nice and comfortable and natural. It's not too low that it's uh, hard to get out of. Okay, with the furniture all done, this backyard makeover is completely done. Well, minus the coffee table. And like I said, Follow me on Instagram at Johnny Builds if you want to see that. It's going to be a couple weeks before I get to finish that. I have to leave town tomorrow. I'm going to be gone for two weeks. So sorry that didn't make it into the video, but this was awesome. Don't forget, I've got plans for this build linked down below. Now let's go get Katie and see what she thinks. Katie, Olive wants to come see it. It's done. <laughs> what do you think? love it. Yeah. Oh my gosh, it's perfect. Isn't it nice? Yes. I really wanted some wood elements out here uh -huh. to like warm it up a little. <laughs> she loves it. I still have to finish the coffee table. Um, obviously, I can't do that until I get back from my trip. I'm really, really happy with it. It, it came out exactly like I wanted it to. It's great. Just like your new haircut. You like it? Okay, y'all, don't forget to click on that link and check out Make By Me to design your own furniture pieces. I've got that link down below. And again, that's totally free to use. I definitely suggest you check that out. And if you haven't already, please get subscribed and follow me on Instagram at Johnny Builds. And as always, thanks for checking this one out. And I'll see you back here next time.